Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to see the services for process management. Now, different services that are present for any process management are process creation, process termination. Then we have <laughs> fork, join, suspend, resume, and so on. So one by one, we are going to see each of those process services. Now, what are those services? These are the runtime services, which are also called as the system calls. And these services are provided by kernels of multi-programming OS or operating system for process management. So now let's start with the process creation. <laughs> process creation is used to create a process. So the system call that is used to create a process is create process. So this is a system called <coughs> which is used to create new process. Now, suppose a process A creates one more process B and one process C. So, this process A creates two more processes B and C. So, in this case, the process which creates more processes is called as the parent process. So in this A is the parent process and B and C are called as the children of this parent process. Now this B and C can also further create uh, their child processes. So now whenever a process is creating uh, more processes then there are certain possibilities that can be present in the system. One of those possibilities is parent continue to execute concurrently with the children. So if A is creating B and C, then one possibility can be A also running or executing and simultaneously concurrently B and C are also running. Then the second uh, possibility can be parent waits until some of or all of its children have terminated. So if A is created or A created B and C, then A will stop its execution up till either B or both B and C terminates. So these are some of the uh, possibilities that can be present in the process creation. Now, whenever a process is created, that process needs to be allocated some address space. So again, there are two possibilities. One is the child is a duplicate of the parent process. So in that case, the child will be running in the parent process address space. Or the second possibility can be child process has another program that is loaded into its address space. So these are some of the possibilities regarding with the address space also. So I have written all the points that I have discussed up till now. Now whenever a process is created, the PCB is also updated for the parent. So uh, we can have that situation like this. This is suppose the process control block and this is the name of the process suppose P0. So this is the process name. Now we can have two pointers here. This particular pointer, this pointer will contain the address of the first child of the parent. We have to maintain a link list so that the parent children relation can be easily identified. So this pointer contains the address of the first child of the parent and this contains the address of the next child so in this way we can have a process control block that contains pointers to the PCB of the first child <laughs> like this the pointer to the PCB of the last child also, pointer to the PCB of the first child and next child also. 
so in this way we can have a process control block that works as a linked list uh, having the address of all the processes parent processes and child process so that is about process creation then we have the process termination once the execution of the process is done then that process terminates or it re releases all its resources from the system and the process termination is done with the exit system call so whenever we a process is encountering exit system call the meaning of this is process is going for the termination now after the termination the process releases all the computing resources such as physical and virtual memory files io devices so that these resources can be used by another process so that is about the process termination now there may be a situation when a parent may terminate the execution of one of its child process suppose a wants to terminate the execution of b then a is allowed to terminate b because a is the parent of b but what are the uh, what are those reasons that may lead to a parent in terminating its own child that we are going to discuss now so the reasons that uh, may lead to the termination of a process by its parents are first reason can be child process has exceeded its usage so if a child process has given some of the resources for the execution if, if child is executing or uh, over using those resources or exhausted its limit of the resources then the parent may terminate the child so the first reason is child process has exceeded its usage usage of the resources so this is the first reason that may lead to the termination of that child process second is task assigned to the child process is completed so once the job is done there is no need to have that particular child process in the system so and that time parent can also terminate the child so <laughs> when the task assigned to the child process is done that is the second reason then the third reason is if a parent process wants to execute the system and the operating system is not allowing a child process to continue in the absence of parent so in that case parent has no choice but to terminate its child also so the third reason is parent wants to exit the system and os is not allowing execution of child without parent these are the three reasons in which a parent may terminate the child process other than creation and termination there are some of uh, these services also for a process the first service is abort abort is the forced termination of a process it is allowed for a process to terminate itself or abort itself but the most frequent use of this particular abort operation is for involuntary termination of a process for example suppose there is a process a and this process is mal functioning or this process is consuming so much resources that the system is going for a halt so in that case this process a can be involuntary 
terminated with the help of abort system call or the service so in this involuntary termination is done that is the abort system call then we have fork and join fork and join are also the method for process creation and termination the fork operation is used to split a sequence of instructions into two concurrently executable sequences okay so if i am saying that this is the sequence of instructions and this is the point where i have to divide my sequence of instructions into two different parts then i can do with the help of fork so at this point i will use fork system call which is used to divide the statement now by dividing the statement actually we are doing we are creating child processes okay so this is done with the help of fork now when the working of this child processes is done the two sequences of the code divided by the fork can be merged into a single statement with the help of join operation so if at this point i am merging these two into a single statement then this is done with the help of join so join is used to merge the statements now if two processes are merging into a single then we are terminating one of those processes so that is the reason join is basically used for the termination terminology and fork is used for creation and this diagram is for illustration purpose only so then we have suspend and resume the suspend service is called as sleep or block in some systems in this the designated or the intended process is suspendly suspended indefinitely and placed in the suspended state now the process is not terminated the process is put in a suspended state suppose this is the process a and with the suspend statement the process a is been put in this suspended state the process a is not terminated it is put in a suspended state now a process can itself go in the suspended state or some another process or the system can force that process to go in the suspended state now to resume that process we have to use the resume system call so if this process needs to be resumed then resume system call is to be used and then this process again wakes up and start executing so what we are doing is with the suspend statement or the suspend call we are we are uh, making a process go from the running to the waiting queue or we are making a process go in the waiting queue so in this suspend we are making a process go in the waiting queue and with resume we are making a process go from this waiting queue into the ready queue so in this you can write process we and this resume makes the process go in the ready queue which means the process is again ready for the execution and in some of the systems this suspend and resume are also known as sleep and for resume we can also use wake up 
so this is your suspend and resume then we have the delay delay is intended the sleep delay is actually a sleep in which the process is suspended for a specified duration of time so in this there is no trigger that makes a process go in the suspended state or again a trigger needs to be fired to make a process resume in this a process goes in the suspended state for the specified duration of time and once that time is done the process itself resumes and go in the ready queue so this is your delay then we also have this get attributes and change priority now get attributes is basically a inquiry in which the operating system responds to a process by providing the current values of its attributes so this is basically a select query if you uh, are familiar with sql then it is a select query which a process fires into the operating system and operating system responds by by giving the values of the attributes then we have a change priority change priority is basically used to change the priority of a process so uh, when you are going to see the scheduling part then you will be more clear about the priority but here you can just understand that change priority is used to change the priority of a process that is all about the uh, process management services thank you for watching the video please subscribe to my youtube channel for more tutorials on operating system and other computer science related subjects thank you